Hey guys, Matt here with Over Automate. Today we're going to be setting up Home Assistant. Now, Home Assistant is a smart home and automation platform. Uh, it's similar to com commercial options like Google Assistant, Amazon Alexa, Wink, Apple HomeKit, Samsung SmartThings, um, and some, some similar open source options like OpenHab. Now, to me, Home Assistant seems way more powerful uh, and in most cases easier to set up. I mean, it works with all the above options so you're not constrained to a uh, single platform or branded devices. Now it currently has over 1600 integrations of both devices and services and there are more added each and every week. Um, these can all be configured to be independently controlled or automated so they can interact and trigger each other. You can check all these out in the link below. Now you're going to need a Raspberry Pi 3 or newer, a 32 gigabyte micro SD card, a micro SD card reader, a power cord, and a wired internet connection. Now, go ahead and insert your SD card and SD card reader into your computer and let's get started. Let's go to the Home Assistant Getting Started page and find the appropriate image for our device. Now, I'm running a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. I'll be downloading the 32-bit version. Now, if you have a virtual machine that you'll be running Home Assistant in, you can go with the 64-bit version of one of these images. Alright, so after that finishes downloading, we're going to go grab a program called Etcher. Um, now Etcher is going to write the image that we just downloaded and done to our SD card. Um, it's a really simple program. Uh, they have it for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I have a link down in the description. Alright, so once you've downloaded and installed Etcher, we're going to launch it. And we're going to go select that image that you had downloaded earlier. And also, if you haven't already, go ahead and insert your SD card into the computer you're using. So here's that Raspberry Pi image we're going to select. And once we insert our SD card, it should pop up. Now we're going to double check that just to make sure. Yes, that is the device we want to write to. And we'll click Flash. Okay, when it's finished flashing, we're going to make sure it's ejected from our computer and we're going to go insert that into our Raspberry Pi. Now, while that Pi is booting up and initializing, um, we want to see what IP address that Raspberry Pi is on our network. Um, now, you can do that through your router web configuration, or you can do it with something called Fing. Um, I'm downloading Fing now. I have a link in the description for it. It's a really easy to use network scanning tool. Um, we can use it to see what kind of devices are on our network, um, what operating systems are running, so it'll be really easy to, to narrow down which IP address is the IP address of our Pi. So once you have Fing downloaded and installed, uh, you can go ahead and launch it. And it's going to ask us to sign in or sign up. I'm going to sign in my Google account just because it's quick and easy. After we're finished signing in, it's going to relaunch that application um, and do a scan of our local network. So this scan shouldn't take too long. Once it's finished, we're going to click See All Devices under your network. Uh, all the it hasn't populated the scan yet. Um, it should any second now, though. We have two pages of devices on my current local network. Okay, there it is. So now we have information on all these devices. So we're going to look for a device that has uh, Raspberry Pi in the details. Uh, there it is. So Home Assistant Raspberry Pi, we see our IP address is 192.168.1.15. So your address may be different, um, take note of it, and put that in your web browser, followed by a colon 8123. So you should see some sort of home assistant branding pop up. Looks like our instance is still initializing. Now once it's done, we're going to enter in our name username and password to log in to our local Home Assistant instance and this will create an account we can log in on any devices on our network in the future. Alright, go ahead and name your home and also have it detect your location. Um, this can be used for some automation in the future as far as weather and um, positioning of devices like phones or trackers. We'll go ahead and also enter in our time zone and elevation. Click next. 
Now, Home Assistant went ahead and detected some integrations that are possible on my network. Uh, it sees I have a printer and a Hue bridge, um, but for now, let's skip that. So here's Home Assistant. We have our dashboard. It's kind of empty right now, um, but we'll be filling this up in videos to come. We do need to go ahead and add one thing, though. Uh, let's go to Supervisor, Add-on Store, and then File Editor. Uh, go ahead and click Install. Okay, once this finishes installing, we want to make sure that Start on Boot is enabled. And also, I'm going to click Show in Sidebar just because I like to have quick access to it, but uh, it's not necessary. And then click Start. This will start it in our Home Assistant instance. Now, once this finishes starting, we can go ahead and open up the web UI. Now, the file editor is just a quick way for us to access some configuration files that Home Assistant sets up for us. The UI has gotten really good in recent years in allowing us to create automations and scripts straight in the UI through drag and drop, uh, though every now and then it's still good to be able to come in here and, and tweak some settings. Now, that concludes our Home Assistant installation video. Next, we'll be setting up the Hue integration and doing our very first automation. If you want to see some more integrations, leave a comment down below, drop a like, and maybe even consider subscribing. I've got a lot of videos and automations coming down the pipe that you won't want to miss. Thanks for watching.